Nice. There is a place in Maine, south of Baxter State Park, known as the Debskinag Lakes Wilderness Area. A beautiful chain of lakes and wilderness. A canoe camper's dream. America in a can. Red, white, and blue, baby. I first visited the area a year ago. The place captured me, left an impression. I've been thinking about it ever since. I had to go back. As luck would have it, I've returned. At just under five hours from my doorstep, our adventure starts here at Spencer Cove on Ambejesus Lake. wind is hammering. Got a headwind and we need to go way over there. And that's not something I feel like doing right now. Glad this island is here. We made it to shore, but it is windy. I'm really glad this island is in here. We, have, we still have a bit of paddling to do and it's just Windy and white cappy out there, so we're gonna wait it out here on this island. Worst case scenario, we're stuck here on this island, and this island is not exactly uh, it's exposed. It's really windy. Wicked so, exposed, man. Wicked exposed. But it could be worse. So if this is where we end up, I'm thankful for it. It's better than being stuck out there. Let's just uh, hang out here. And, oh, got it, got it. Nice, nice catch. Nice. <laughs> well done, sir. He still got it. He might be old, but don't let him fool you. Think, just wait here for a bit. I think you wait half an hour, so I think yep. it, this is like a, I think it's like a squall. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Well, we wanted an adventure, but not bad for the first half an hour of 11 days. <laughs> <laughs> We're tucked behind a rock here out of the wind. Nice little spot, good little view. Good spot to wait out the wind. Hopefully this stuff dies down. Oh, we're going for it. And I'm glad we are because it's a stunning paddle. And I didn't want to be stuck at that island. A little windy, a little choppy, kind of rough, and it's starting to rain. But I'm glad we're on the water and moving forward because the location is going to be way better. It'll be worth it in the long run. It's been a long day. It took me about five hours to drive here and that paddle in was pretty adventurous for such a short paddle. I've got camp all set up and now we're just gonna hang out, relax, eat some food, have a few sips of some bourbon and go to bed. I didn't really film too much today, but what I can tell you is that Craig and I are planning on being out here for 11 days. In that span of time, I plan on making the most comprehensive canoe trip video that I've ever made before, but not tonight. Tonight's all about rest, catching up with Craig, and then tomorrow we're gonna get into it. So, without any further ado, it's time for a shot. Cheers, guys, to Maine.
these cheddar bratwurst, man. Nice. Quick and easy. Yep. So what happened? Spark hit my jacket. It's gonna happen occasionally, yep. right? And Craig has some clear tenacious tape. And I happen to have my Swiss Army, which has scissors, which makes this process a lot easier. Yeah, you know, just like the Tenacious Tape, you don't always use it, but when you want to, the Swiss Army knife as well, it's, it's there. Boom. Now the fluff stays where it's supposed to. Nice. Thanks for the tape. Fantastic. Me too. Me cold. Like not even close. While my coffee is getting ready, I'd like to show you one of my tricks. Here's my insulated mug. And inside my mug, I like to bring eggs. That was really cool. Sitting here eating my breakfast, enjoying my coffee, and those ducks came right up close. Put on a show for me. Mm. That is delicious coffee. The sun feels good. It's cold out this morning.
Well, we were on the water for about five minutes and decided to pull off and put on our rain gear and windbreakers because it is much more windy on this side of the lake. It's pretty windy out there, and if it stays that way all day, we're going to be battling a pretty good headwind. So the adventure continues. <laughs> I love it. It's so nice out here. All year long, I look forward to this trip. This is the third year in a row Craig and I have done a trip in October, and it's definitely become one of my favorite things to do as far as adventure is concerned. I look forward to this all year long. And here we are. I mean, look at this view. Not this one. Let me turn you around. Our adventure started in Spencer Cove on Ambejesus Lake. Today we're paddling our way up the Pemadum Cook Lake, currently making our way to Big Moose Island. The headwind's not too bad. Water's a little choppy, but nothing too crazy. It's fun. taking a break on Moose Island right now. Really nice spot. We camped here last year on this trip. Today we're just using it as a good spot for a lunch break. We can get some food and we dehydrated oranges dipped in chocolate, dark chocolate. Here are the makings of my lunch. A wrap, buffalo chicken, cheddar cheese, bacon, and some dehydrated tomatoes. Plus I have an jalapeno cheese Slim Jim that my daughter gave me. She wanted to make sure I had some good snacks, so she picked this up for me. We're loading back up, heading out. What? Huh? Yeah. We're going that way. The afternoon paddle brings us from Big Moose Island, further up the Pemadum Cook Lake, to the Namakanta Outlet. Beautiful out here. Camp is in there. For this trip, I'm using my superior gear, 30 degree hammock. And I'm pairing that with my 45 degree get out gear quilt and the Climax Static V pillow with my own little fleece sleeve that I made for it. 
This hammock has an integrated under quilt and it's good for 30 degrees. And this quilt is rated for 45 degrees and it got down to 30 degrees last night and I was fine. I was comfy, I slept well. I was wearing my down jacket though. So that helps a lot. I brought my down jacket and my down pants just in case. I've been using this hammock pretty much all season long and I'm a fan, I like it a lot. I've gone the way of the hammock. <laughs> These things are so comfortable. All my life I've been using tents and uh, now I'm starting to swing more towards the, the hammock side. They're extremely comfortable. What all those hammock elitists say and their claims they make about them being way more comfortable than tents, they're, uh, they're right. I've been using this for a couple seasons now and for the price, I'm telling you, these things are great. I love this thing. It's a great little quilt. For 70 bucks, you can have a down quilt that weighs a pound. And I love it. And for protection, I'm using this tarp. This is the Warbonnet Superfly. This is my first trip using this tarp. I'm really excited to have a tarp with doors. I was concerned that being out here for 11 days that I might not have the coverage that I might need if I didn't have the doors because it could be really windy and rainy. So uh, whatever excuse it takes to buy some new gear, right? I have it set up in porch mode. This is a pretty nice campsite, very spread out, will definitely accommodate a lot of tents. There's a lot of trees for hammocks too, lots of options. Tonight for dinner I'm having dehydrated tacos with refried beans and salsa and some rice, instant rice. I suppose I didn't need to use filtered water for this. We had a nice relaxing morning, followed by a nice relaxing evening. We thought for sure that we were going to get rained on, so we decided to head to this campsite and set up in the event that rain came, but it didn't. And that's fine, because this whole trip is based around not having a plan. And today we were going to do the portage and head into the Debs, but that's not what was in the cards. and. I'm digging it. This is really nice. This campsite is awesome. We didn't come here last year, so it's getting to see some new area in the area. <laughs> and that's what it's all about, is just explore and do our own thing at our own pace. Like there are no set plans for this trip. We don't have to be at any site at any day. Just take it as it comes. Gonna eat some dinner and just enjoy this evening. It's a nice one. Cheers, man. Cheers. Good paddle today. Yeah, it was a nice effort. Good Windy. push. Yeah. That yeah. took longer than I thought it was going to. Yeah, fighting a headwind pretty much all day. Mm -hmm. But we made it work, and here we are. It's a lovely campsite, man. Indeed. Perfect. And for some crunch, 
and texture and throwing on some dehydrated tomatoes. These are so good. Mm. Okay. The taco mix I've done several times. I'll put a link up here somewhere to a video on how I actually make the taco mix. But I've never done it with rice and refried beans. And I actually mixed some salsa that one of my friends made, which was fantastic, and with some refried beans hydrated that. It's a lot of food. What a way to wake up. This morning for breakfast I'm having biscuits and gravy, dehydrated turkey sausage, and some gravy powder. This weighs three ounces, so I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. And I packed in biscuits. It's already thickening up like crazy. There it is, guys. Biscuits and gravy and coffee. Lakeside. This is fantastic. <laughs> wow. That biscuits and gravy was absolutely fantastic. Super easy to make. You just take some ground turkey. What I did was took ground turkey, seasoned it like I would sausage, and then dehydrated it at 130 degrees until it was done. Then I bought a pack of that Pioneer sausage gravy. It makes two cups, and I weighed out one and a half ounces of ground turkey sausage and one and a half ounces of that sausage mix, and that was plenty of food. And then what I did was I baked some Pillsbury Doughboy biscuits at home, the, the biscuits, not the, not the, uh, the flaky ones, because the biscuits hold together much, much better. The buttermilk biscuits. And they're pretty light once you bake them. No need to dehydrate them for a trip like this. And they hold together really well. And it made for a quick, easy, absolutely delicious breakfast on this chilly morning. What a treat. This is the first time I've ever done it, and it's a keeper. I'll be doing it again. Time to start breaking down camp. According to my thermometer, last night the temperature dropped down into the high 20s last night. 28, 29 degrees. And I was fine. I slept fine. Slept right through it. Did not get cold. But I was wearing my down jacket and I had my down pants on, which I have since removed. But yeah. 30 degree under quilt, 45 degree quilt. Down pants, down jacket, sleeping like a champ. Before I tear down my setup, it's time to release the burritos. All 
I always put the head end of my hammock in the sack last. That way when I'm setting up, I know exactly which end I want my head end to be on. And that's the end I start with. Campsite is all packed up. We're ready to hit the water. We're back on the water. It's about 10 after 10. We only have about a mile to paddle today to get to the portage. Portage day. That was a nice campsite. I'm glad that yesterday worked out the way it did. It's always fun exploring and checking out different campsites. Logging them in the memory map for future reference. We're on Lake Pemadumcook right now. And we're about to make our landing for our portage. is my removable yoke that I made last year. This thing works great. I made it out of cedar so that it's light. This whole thing weighs 1.1 pounds. One pound, one ounce, I should say. It's a year old now, tried and true. It's worked, it hasn't let me down yet. Portage from Pemadum Cook Lake to 3rd Debskeneg is one mile of easy walking. It's a wide open road, nice easy path. All right, we've made the portage. Yep. We're here, 3rd Debskeneg Lake. Debskoniag, the Debs. There we go. We did it. That portage didn't seem that bad at all. And that brings me segueing right into what I'm going to talk about right now is one of the reasons we came back here for the second year was because the trip was kind of fresh on our mind from last year and we both learned quite a bit last year and we wanted to employ that, employ what we learned this year on this trip. And I feel like for me personally, it's paying off. Just different gear, a little bit lighter load, packed better. Absolutely. And it, it worked this time around. It worked last time around too, but it's fun to take what you've learned and try and add on to that and make the trip better or more efficient. And that... You always learn. Yeah, always learning. Like bringing really a much. two and a half pound axe that you don't really need. Right. And you got to lug it around. That's why I said I'm not doing it this year. I don't miss it one bit. Yeah, no axe. We don't have an axe. You don't need it. It was just two and a half pounds of weight. And also, coming here two years in a row really solidifies in my memory what the area is so i become much more familiar with it it's fun to learn or it's fun for me to be able to see how well i recalled last year so just putting all that stuff together makes it really fun to come back and do this two years in a row plus we're not in a rush we're not leapfrogging back and forth with anyone or any large groups and it gives us a chance to explore the area more and I'm digging it. I'm also hungry. It's lunchtime. Today's lunch is just like yesterday's, except we're doing the sweet Thai chili tuna, bacon, bacon bits, cheese, and dehydrated tomatoes. Some jerky, sausage links, and dehydrated apples. Back on the water, we're on the third Debs. We're gonna paddle across this lake and do the portage to second Debs.
pretty sure that this is the nicest freshwater lake I've ever seen in my life. The water in this lake is just really clear, just a magnificent color blue, clear. I honestly don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Someday I'd like to come back here and spend a lot of time on this lake, a day or two, fishing, swimming, just enjoying it, because it is beautiful. carry from here to second Debs is three tenths of a mile. Much shorter than the last one. Here's how I have my canoe rigged up for portaging the carry. I have my spare paddle twist tied into place. My seat is backwards and folded down, which is pinching my saw in place. I've got my other paddle, my primary paddle. Again, twist tied right into place. You know, nothing moves. Everything is nice and secure. It's not rattling. And my life jacket, my PDF, is tied up with the paddles for support and on the back side of the seat, underneath the seat, so that when the canoe is flipped, it's just resting on that seat. It all seems to work pretty slick. Craig got crafty and used his paddles for support as a yoke to carry his boat. trail is much twistier and tighter than the other. This is the campsite that we stayed at last year. Right on the second Debs. This year, this time around, there's a campsite right over there that we've never stayed at, and that's where we're heading. Here's the site, guys. Here's the fire pit. Last year, this is the fire pit that I came over to. Campers had left and this thing was still smoldering. Craig and I had to put it out. Big, wide, spread out camp spot. that way there is a waterfall so if it sounds like wind noise on this footage that's why
new to me and the first time I've used them is on this trip are the NRS boundary boots. It's got a pretty aggressive tread. Nice soft rubber. They grip really well on wet rocks. They're really comfortable. I wore them on the portages today and they were fine. My feet were comfy. And they're waterproof so this makes getting in and out of the canoe a lot easier. They're kind of a game changer in this colder water. They're very warm, lightweight, and comfy. I seem to be I'm, I'm pleased with them so far. I mean I just got them so I don't have enough information to pull from to really give a solid opinion but I'm happy with the first performance of these things. I did wear them around on my property to make sure to break them in and make sure that they were comfy and gonna fit and whatnot. But yeah, I like them. They've been working great. It's nice to be able to just paddle around all day wearing these and then hop out of the canoe, not worry about water, and then hit the portage wearing these. It's just simple, comfortable, and it works. But as comfortable as these are, it's nice to pull them off, get into some fresh socks, and into my shoes. These are my camp shoes for the trip. These are the Solomon Speedcross 5s. I love these things. I've been a fan of Solomon's for a long time. I originally got the first version of the Speedcrosses and those lasted me so long that by the time I needed to update and get a new pair it was already they were already under the Speedcross 3s. And the Speedcross 3s, those things were awesome and they lasted so long that I didn't need the 4s. I went straight to the 5s and no complaints. I've been wearing these for a year now and they're awesome. Lightweight, real aggressive, real grippy, super comfortable. So that's it. That's what I've got for footwear on this trip. It does feel good to get the feet into some fresh socks and nice shoes. There's nothing better than falling asleep next to running water. It's one of the best sounds in the world to fall asleep to for me. I love it. It's so relaxing. This is a good spot. Spirits. Tasty libations. The spirits are high. Tonight's meal, oh man, we'll just say that I'm looking forward to this. Dehydrated veggies, dehydrated turkey sausage, a gravy packet, and water. Time to take that off the heat, let it sit for a little bit move on to phase two. Oh yeah. Approximately half a package of Idaho and potatoes and roughly 1.5 ounces of stuffing mix and more water. And I brought out the secret ingredient, the calories that dehydrated food lacks. I'm giving it back. Butter. You brought butter? Yes, I did. Butter flakes. Nope, nope, not, not butter flakes. Real butter? Butter. See? Oh yeah, you did bring it. I did. Oh, it's still hard. Hard as a rock. That's what she said. This is going to give me the calories that I need to keep on going and possibly make my heart explode. Who knows? <laughs> Stay tuned. What will Justin's heart do? I'll carry you shit out. You can have my boat. All right. That's a good idea. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
Oh my goodness. Oh boy. It's time. Even if it's not ready, it's time. Oh. Look at that. You might need a little water, no? And nobody asks your opinion, old man. <laughs> See the abuse I endure? What? You started it. I'm just trying to help you, boy. <laughs> Son. <laughs> Son. That is delicious. Craig's gonna have some fire roasted socks for dessert. <laughs> yeah, these are smart. Well, they're delicious. Let's <laughs> see in some nice boiling water. Mmm. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. Hey, you ring it out into your ramen. Oh. Uh, it's freaking delicious, man. I'll knock it till you try it. I like to just use hot water to clean my dishes. Works really well. It's easy. No soap required. Some dehydrated apples here. With cinnamon. Oh, they're good. Turned out perfect, delicious. So from this campsite, there's a trail, four tenths of a mile to Big Minister Pond. And we're gonna go check it out. We don't have any information on the trail at all, but the trail is on the map. So we're here, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna give it a shot. really nice out here it feels good to be walking with no weight stretching away. hey bear <laughs> it's like somebody was sleeping in here it looks like there was a little bushcraft oh. yeah. at one point maybe a little bushcraft bed I wonder how far back it goes I didn't bring any kind of light me neither that's cool really cool over on this side, everything is all coniferous and green. And right on the other side of the trail, the deciduous trees start taking over and the colors start popping. This is amazing. It's real nice out here. I'm so glad we decided to come out here and do this. Nice change of pace, you know? Ooh, tree down. It is wild out here. Glad those blue ribbons are here. <laughs> it's a little hard to find the trail sometimes. Yeah, I'm really glad they are. Sick, sick, sick. Feels old out here. Might not look it, but that is a huge tree.
That was a really nice hike. That's fabulous, dude. I'm really glad we did that. Yeah, me too. Now it's time to break down camp and what do we do after that? Paddle. Paddle. Now we're just out here waiting on Craig. <laughs> Nicely played. <laughs> Again. That is good water. It's about 12 o'clock right now. We're making our way up the second Debs. And it's, it's as hot as it's been all week right now. It's warm. Really calm, quiet, and warm. There's the rock garden of the second Debs. It's a lot of fun to paddle through. I spent a lot of time in there last year. But this year, the water levels are low. And I feel like making contact is inevitable. So I'm going to avoid it. Paddle with caution. This morning was an awesome change of pace. That hike was great. And the paddle this morning was phenomenal. Real calm, nice, nice and quiet. Now we have seven tenths of a mile. It's portage time. Portage. Yeah. Wicked carry, bub. Portage, my brother. <laughs> Last year when we did this trip, we had to do the portages in multiple sections 
Like we had to carry some gear, drop it off, go back, get the other stuff, bring it up to the other stuff, drop it off, take a break, grab our stuff, jockey it up forward, go back, get the other stuff. It definitely made for a lot more work, but that's part of the progression. That's the progression of it. It's part of what we learned because this year we're doing it all in one carry. Everything at once. That's wonderful. <laughs> It's not very sketchy at all. Right? I did that in one single push, no brakes. I wish I timed that. My canoe weighs 32 pounds at the very start of this trip my backpack and all my gear weighed 38 pounds plus my yoke plus my paddles so i mean definitely 70 plus pounds 73 ish pounds the weight is less now because we've been eating some of that food stash for a few days and whatnot but and drinking <laughs> but still a rugged haul it's a rugged carry I think we're gonna have some lunch, then onward. It's amazing how little water you need. It's shallow, what do we got here? <laughs> Four inches? Yeah, and I'm not even hitting it. This is a campsite we stayed at last year. Real nice site.
going to have to get settled in and enjoy our last night of being dry. They're calling for a lot of rain tomorrow, so we'll see. I'm going to enjoy it while it's not raining. What a nice spot. Cheers. Fourth night. Tonight's our fourth night, right? Yeah. We yeah. haven't seen one other paddler, not one other person, the whole time. Maine. The way life should be. That's right. That'd make a great license plate slogan or something. Check out this fire pit. This thing's massive. I love it. We stayed here last year and this was one of my more enjoyable spots of the trip. I really liked this spot. It's fun that the last three nights we've stayed in locations that we haven't stayed at before, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. This is a really nice spot. Worthy of a return, that's for sure. It's just, it's magnificent here. Hey, buddy. I'm gonna stomp him. I'll murder you. <laughs> yeah, run away from that bad man. Go save yourself. Tonight for dinner, it's quick and easy. I'm finishing up the potatoes that I started yesterday. Stuffing. Bacon bits. Cheddar cheese. And butter. Craig. What? It's real butter. Got some lemon tea here. Boom. There goes good with bourbon. Yeah. And mashed potatoes. <laughs> Flying solo again tonight, fellas. We haven't seen anyone in four days, and there's not another light or fire or anything on the opposite shore. There's nothing. We're out here all by ourselves, and I couldn't be happier about it. Tomorrow, rain. <laughs> Nighty night. It's almost 50 degrees this morning. I slept like a champ. Got a nice morning, but there's rain coming today, this evening. A little fire going for my coffee and oatmeal because I'm trying to conserve fuel for the rainy days that are coming. This morning I'm having peaches and cream with dehydrated peaches.
chocolate dipped espresso beans from Hilltop Packs. That's gonna help put a little pep in my step. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, those clouds are cruising. Yeah. Nice morning out here. How long is the rain going to hold out today? That is the question. Weatherman says it's not coming until this evening, but it doesn't look that way. Yeah, you can see it right, right there. We got a weather storm blowing in. We were talking to some locals the first portage bill and linda they own the place right there at the portage and they said that we were going to get probably 30 mile an hour up to 30 mile an hour winds and a lot of rain thursday night but we're in for a good stretch of pretty foul weather days It is so nice out here. What a place to spend some time. So we are now at the outlet of the west branch of the Penobscot River where it dumps into the Debskinag Deadwaters and last year we checked out a couple sites that were up that way a little bit. Not really our style so we moved on but the Debskinag Falls are out that way and I'd really like to see those falls. Predicted rain be damned. We're, um, we're, we're out here we're gonna take the time to do it so we've got about a mile hike we figure to get to the falls and we're gonna check them out and Hopefully it's worth it. Things got impassable there on the bank, so we cut through the woods to find the road and we found it. Nice. The river comes down and it splits, I can tell right there, and I can hear the falls on the other side of the island. So I'm guessing that those are actually the Debskinag Falls, and I can't really get to them. I'm not going down there and trying to skirt around that water and slippery rock and island. All right, I'm good. Oh, well, the falls were a little anticlimactic, and we made it to the campsite, and there were people set up, but we didn't actually see any people just signs of them so i'm still running with the fact that we haven't seen anybody the whole trip well that was fun and all but we're back on the water and once again we don't have a plan we're just gonna start cruising until the weather starts looking bad or until we find a site that's far enough down the river if the rain holds out like the weatherman says we're gonna have all day to do what we want to do rain's not coming until tonight but it was sprinkling a little earlier. It is what it is. That's the fun of it.
Thanks, man. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. I was a little bit apprehensive only because it's cold. Yeah. And I didn't want to lose gear or go in, you know? Summertime, not a big deal. Although I didn't want... That's a problem with these kind of boats. My main concern also is smashing. Yeah, it's a case of rock. In a boat like the one Jimmy gave it, who gives a fuck? You can't drop the rocks. That's all part of it, man. Rapids right there and rapids right there. So it's time to carry our stuff across this island. We've got ourselves a short little carry. Back at it. Wild cranberries. Smell good. They're really good. Skies are getting dark now, so we've decided to come to shore and set stuff up before the storm comes. We want to get everything buttoned up while we're dry and have the opportunity to do so because we don't know when it's just going to start letting go. It's starting to get breezy and it was sprinkling on us lightly twice on our paddle just recently, so it's time to be smart about it and get into the woods, set up our stuff, and stay dry because it's supposed to rain all night long and all day tomorrow. Heavy rain, heavy winds. So the smart thing to do is bunker down, and that's what we're doing. I found a spot in here tucked away in the cedars and hemlock trees. Two really nice, healthy trees. That should provide a lot of protection with any luck. What I'm doing is taking pieces of paracord and tying them off on my hammock strap. In theory, the water is gonna run down this strap, hit this paracord, and take the path of least resistance. Some will definitely get past, but I've got another one lined up here. And that should do it. I have my hammock pitched a little bit lower than I normally like, because I'm going to pitch that tarp low. I'm gonna pitch everything low to the ground for maximum protection. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to have to adjust things while it's pouring. So normally I like to be able to stand up underneath my tarp in optimal conditions. I don't even need a tarp or have half the tarp kicked back. But tonight I'm pitching everything really low. Tonight for dinner, I'm having dehydrated chili, four ounces of it. It's got some biscuits, 
And dehydrated rice. Dehydrated rice, yeah. Instant rice. I'm tired, folks. Just threw in some bacon bits and cheese. Oh yeah, cheddar cheese. It's gonna be good. Biscuits. We're all bunkered down and ready for the event. So with any luck, no equipment failures. I'm praying for no equipment failures. I hope everything's solid. I have everything guyed out. Everything looks good. Buttoned right up tight. And uh, let's see how this goes. See you in the morning. Oh, well, good morning, guys. Rained pretty good last night. Not so bad right now. It's actually kind of nice. A little windy, real light rain, but we're in for it. There's a wind advisory and a flood advisory. I was looking at my weather app, and they were saying there's going to be 2.8 inches of rain in the next 24 hours. So this is going to get interesting. Turns out uh, Bill and Linda were right. We're in for it. We're gonna get pounded on. My tarp is pitched very tight to the ground and all guide out, closed right up. So with any luck, it'll hold up to what's coming. And inside, we got my hammock. All my gear. There's quite a bit of room in there, honestly. It's just not very tall. I'm trying to get out and walk around as much as I can while I have the opportunity. I don't really sit all that well. You know, I have a hard time staying in one place with nothing really to do. Get a little twitchy, weird. The weather forecast is looking gnarly. I'm excited about it, but I gotta be honest, I'm a little apprehensive and nervous about it as well. My worst fear is that equipment failure. So we're kinda out here. If anything goes wrong, if there's any equipment failures or anything of the sort, then it could get real, real quick. That's my worst fear. Let's see, both lines are doing their job. This is tomato soup that I dehydrated with instant rice, vegetables, and dehydrated ground turkey, seasoned like sausage. This is delicious. There's nothing like some good soup on a rainy day. This is perfect. And I'm going to enjoy it with my last biscuit. Making these biscuits at home worked out great.
All right, guys, I think it's over. It's about 7.30, the rain has stopped, and my weather app says that from eight o'clock on, smooth sailing, clear skies, and I feel like I can see some blue trying to peek through the overcast gray, but that could just be wishful thinking. It poured last night. Last night was the bulk of it. It came down hard, all night long, steady, just hammering rain. And I stayed nice and toasty and dry, so that's good. What an awesome job that did. After sitting here for a day and a half in rain, I'm really pleased with this setup. I like it a lot. And one of these mugs right here, boiled, gives me enough water for my oatmeal and my coffee. And I kind of tinkered with this setup a little bit last night and got it working really well. I've got one drip line up top. That's where the water would come down and hit it, run down. But inevitably there was more. And this strap, my hammock strap, that was doing the same thing. It was doing a really good job of directing the water the way I wanted it to go. And then I put one more drip line right there, which was catching some water. See, there's some moisture in there. But this never got wet. And it poured. There's no, no darkness in the fabric from where water changed it. Nice and dry. That worked really well. I did the same thing on the other side and it worked like it should. Everything's dry. I'm very pleased. I'm extremely happy about that. It would have been bad to get wet last night. But I didn't. I'm gonna let that tarp hang there for a little bit and dry out while I'm packing everything up. And the tarp is one of the last things that I always put in my bag anyway. It's right on top of the first aid and the poop kit. Because you never know when you're gonna need some band-aids and first aid. You never know when that emergency poop is gonna creep up on you. There's mosquitoes out here. And you never know when you're gonna need to throw up a tarp real quick for protection. You don't want to have to be digging through your pack frantically for any of those in the event that you need them. So they go on top. Wow, the mosquitoes are like actually out here bugging me, man. Bugging me, bro. Just killed one trying to get behind my ear. Little blood sucking bastards. Wow. Day six we're on, and there's our first other paddlers. We've made visual contact with a canoe that carries two. Six days without seeing anybody, any other adventurers. That's pretty good. It's really good. The famous Amber Jesus Boathouse. Isn't it one of the oldest buildings on the whole lake? Back from the logging industry? Exactly. Yep. Sure does feel good being back in the canoe after being pinned down for a day and a half. What a nice morning. Beautiful out here. My hat's all crumpled up from sleeping on it. 
Oh boy. So nice out here. Got himself a nice little meal. All right, we're right back where we started, which means this is the end of part one of our journey. We're going to recollect ourselves, get some stuff at the store, look at the map, look at the weather, and figure out what we want to do from here. Man, those people in that canoe, no offense, but they really screwed us, man. We were half an hour away from doing this whole trip without seeing any other paddlers. I hope they enjoyed their paddle because it was a nice morning. All right. What do you say? Let's do this. I'm going to get some good vittles over there. Yeah. There's a store. They're open. They're closed tomorrow, so we're going to try to get some food now. Regroup and head back out. Hot, good, unhealthy food. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, this is amazing. Got myself the hunt panini. Just buffalo chicken and all kinds of stuff here from the Northwoods Trading Post. Oh my, look at that. Mm. Yep. What'd you get? This is called the chimney. The chimney. Yeah, it's got bacon. Oh my. And uh, Ooh, honestly, barbecue sauce. Barbecue I sauce, yeah. Gouda cheese. Ooh, that sounds Gouda. Vehicles are in good shape. Lunch from the Northwoods Trading Post was awesome. And the weather's looking good for another three days or so. So we're going back out. Yesterday's storm system is burning off now and it's making for some magnificent paddling conditions. What a difference a day makes. Check out this setup. It's got water on the left. All the way around, got water on my right. It's nice and breezy out and that's good. I'm gonna get everything hung up early so it can all dry out. As dry as my setup kept me last night, in torrential rain like that, things are gonna get damp. Even if the rain doesn't make contact, it's humid and wet and everything gets damp. So it's nice to get an opportunity to hang everything up and get it dry, let it dry out. Especially the tarp. The tarp's still got water on it. It's nice to get that in the breeze. That thing will be dry in no time. I'm so glad we came back out. We weren't quite sure what we were gonna do because the forecast was pretty gnarly, but it's dialing back in our favor. So here we are. Our plan was to be out here for 11 days. Today is day number six. So we'll see how all that pans out. This, at this point right now the weather's looking good until Tuesday but with any luck it continues its trend and keeps getting better and better and better and playing in our favor this is one of those spots that's not on the map where we stayed last night that was another spot that was not on a map last year Craig and I found this spot in the fire ring that fire ring right there just by exploring just this trip alone, we found five campsites that have fire rings that are not on the map. No offense, guys, but I'm never telling you where they are. We found them by exploring, good old-fashioned exploring. Paddling along, hey, that looks like it could be something pretty cool. Let's go check that out. Make the effort, go check it out. And you never know what you're going to find. This site alone has two fire rings on it. This, this fire ring right here, and there's a fire ring over by where Craig has set up his rig. And that fire ring looks like it hasn't been used in probably, it's been years, long time. It's almost buried, almost consumed by nature. Pretty wild. But they're out here, folks, just tucked away in the woods, and you'd never know they're there unless you find them.
the lighting out here is incredible. Check this out. I'm gonna go show you guys the fire pit that's by Craig's campsite. So here's Craig's setup over here. I haven't gone over it yet. He's got the war bonnet. Cloudburst. Cloudburst tarp. 10 by 11 rectangular. 10 by 11 rectangular. Smart wool sock, S slightly, <laughs> slightly roasted. <laughs> it's now my drip line. <laughs> the drip line. See, multi-purpose folks, well multi-purpose. He's got the War Bonnet Eldorado, which is an awesome tarp. Hammock. Hammock, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and what underquilt do you have? It's the War Bonnet Wookie Zero Degree. Oh, he's using the Wookie Zero. He's got the, the Wookie uh, Zero. Hammock gear underquilt protector. Underquilt protector. That is something that's next on my list. Came right in real there. handy uh, the past couple days. I bet. I bet it was pouring out last night i'm sure that really helped yeah but check this out guys this is what i'm talking about right here look at that fire pit this is where we're gonna have our fire tonight <laughs> <laughs> i think we gotta discuss that one buddy that fire pit is almost gone but who knows how long it's been since it's been used it's but it's awesome. there look at it man it hasn't been used in probably 50 60 years Long time. I mean, there's moss and stuff growing on it. Yeah. He's right. Who knows? Probably just lacerate my fingers with glass, but nope, that's that's been there a while. Yeah. Almost reclaimed. Yeah. Who knows how many of those are out here and where they're located. Oh, the sun's popping. Look at that. Hammocks are so much better than tents. That's right, I said it. What's said is said, what's done is done. And I ain't kidding either. What movie is that from? Come on, you should know. Ah, yes. Porch mode, this is the way. I honestly think this is my favorite spot of the whole trip so far, right here. Being able to utilize the Northern Trading Post is awesome. We just did a six day trip, made ourselves full circle, and they're closing tomorrow, done for the season. So it was nice to get back, get some hot food and some fresh, cold beers. I bought myself a 12 pack of Pounders. Oh man, and after six days, a cold beer, Oh. oh my God. Here's one of the things that I really like about hammocks is that they double as chairs. Yesterday, as I was pinned down for a day and a half underneath my tarp, it was nice being able to just sit in my hammock like so. I think being pinned down for a long period of time is much better in a hammock than it is a tent, a solo tent. I mean, this is pretty comfortable. I could fall asleep just like this. Stopping at the store was a really good idea. This was only half of the sandwich. I ate the other half at lunch. Mm -hmm. 
This is so good. Uh, it's kind of old, but there's a moose track. There's a lot of them out here. Look at that. My hand fits in it. Look at them all. This track's all up and down this beach. I would love to see a moose out here. The stove that I've been using for this trip is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. I've had this thing for years, years and years and years. I love it. This is a really good stove, not the lightest, Probably not the best, but a really nice stove nonetheless. I'm excited about this. One of the things that I got while I was at the trading post is this big, huge bomb of sweetness right here. It's a pumpkin whoopie pie. Mm-hmm. Candied pecans, cream cheesy goodness. Look at this thing, it's a work of art. The squirrel agrees. I'm going to enjoy this with my coffee. I've been looking forward to this since I bought it. Yep. The woman at the store said these were made from scratch and I believe her. This is really good. Mmm. delicious as this is, it's just way too much for me to eat right now in one sitting. So I'll be saving it for later. That'll make a nice snack at lunchtime. Last night my water filtration bag developed a leak. Right there. And that sucks but it makes me really happy that I brought a spare just in case. I have the plunger and I also brought a spare filter because you never know. I have been using this bag for two, this is the second season now, so I'm pleased with what I got out of it. I'm thinking about getting a different system. What do you have? How do you like it? Let me know. Another enjoyable morning. It's quarter of 11. No need to rush, it's windy out. No matter what, it's gonna be windy out today. We've got a windy paddle in store. We're not planning on going very far. We have about a three mile paddle today, but three miles in the wind, that can be challenging. So we'll see how it goes. I'm all bundled up, cause I know it's windy out there. I'm hot sitting in this cove, kind of second guessing myself, but I know we're minutes from heading out into that. This isn't so bad. The water is a bit choppy. Got some good rollers, but it's not really white capping, just barely white capping in spots. And most importantly, the wind is not that fierce. I shouldn't say that because we still have a little bit of paddling to do, but so far it's been pretty nice. It's been a nice paddle. Lunchtime. Well, right now we're on Moose Island. We took a nice little lunch break and the weather has calmed down. The wind has all but died down. 
The water's nice and flat, and we know that across the lake, way over that way, there's a cluster of islands. One of them, which has a campsite on it, on my map. So we're thinking that maybe we're going to head that way for the night. We've we've camped on Moose Island before. Nice island, but I'd like to check out some areas that we haven't seen yet. I had some more of that whoopie pie for lunch, and <laughs> I still couldn't finish it. So there's more. That is a lot of food. Holy cow. I'm going to end up getting diabetes after eating that thing. We're going for it. Hopefully this pays off. Never really know. We're leaving a nice campsite. We know that. And we're going into the unknown for us, so it might not be a very nice sight. We could be stuck there for the night. But it might be awesome. You never know. That's the fun of it. What I do know, and Craig agrees, is that it's much too early in the day to just sit here. So, especially being that the weather let up for us. So we're gonna take advantage of that and do some exploring. Try and find some stuff we haven't seen. Here we go. Woo! view right there just made this whole paddle today worth it. Check that out. I think I found it. Nice spot. Well worth the effort. Tonight's hammock setup is going from this tree right here to that one right there. Nice. There's no rain forecasted overnight, so I'm in porch mode. Got everything pitched high so that I can have a view, a nice breeze, and enjoy my surroundings. I'm going to wake up looking at that. Check out this view. We have this magnificent view. And my hammock is right there. This is awesome. Today's paddle really paid off. What a spot. <laughs> All right, for dinner tonight, I am having dehydrated cabbage stew. I'm gonna throw in some sausage mix, some dehydrated veggies, and some bacon bits. That's gonna make one heck of a meal.
That is a lot of food. It smells good. I'm gonna put some butter in this stuff here. Yeah. Get some of that fat back. Oh shit. Yeah. Butter makes everything better. Makes it better. Lid's taking it pretty rough over the last seven days. I paid a lot of money for that, so I am a little disappointed, but it's still hanging in there. America in a can, red, white, and blue, baby. This tree right there kind of looks like one tree, but it's not. Good morning, everyone. We're on day eight right now, and got a bit of bad news. There's rain coming for the next two days. It's just gonna pour. So just like last year, we're calling it early. We've got a few miles to paddle out of here, then we're gonna load everything up onto the vehicles and head home. It's not the 11 days that I wanted, but I don't really feel like sitting in rain for two days. It is what it is. Um, we talked about it this morning and made the decision together and we both agree that there's no real point in sitting around in the rain for two days just waiting for the rain to pass so we can pack up and head home. That's, that doesn't sound very fun. So that's it guys. What an awesome adventure. This was a lot of fun. We had a great time. It was great to do the loop again. It was good to get out here and see some different parts of the lake and I'm pumped about it. This was an awesome time. Had a ton of fun. Ate dehydrated food. Didn't eat one freeze-dried meal not one the whole time so that's fun we were gonna try some tonight good to go from Maine it seemed fitting to me to try some meals from Maine while we were in Maine but that's not in the cards that'll be another time I got my beard, man. Yeah, I got, my, got my grays really starting to pop out now yeah, stressful horrible. stressful business hanging out with you yeah <laughs> as always a fantastic time hanging out with this guy right here what an awesome adventure it's all you man good stuff don't forget to check out his channel him right there, there whoop, 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 for a different outlook different perspective thanks for watching guys thanks for watching bye craig bye i'll see you on the next one